Social media manager, blogger, app designer, cloud services specialist, big data analyst. These jobs barely existed 10 years ago. But what's coming next? A smart design home manager, algorithm bias auditor, cyber calamity forecaster, you name it. It is clear by now that the traditional path of getting a degree and finding a job for life no longer applies. It is not only a generational and cultural phenomenon. Technology is constantly evolving and hand in hand goes the evolution of the job market. This calls for people to continuously learn new abilities, be upskilled and get ready for the future. Now, the big question is, when does the future start? Is it tomorrow? Is it in 10, 15 years maybe? Well, place your bets, because in this episode of Tech Talk, Carla and I have a fascinating conversation with Christopher Rosa, Emerging Technologies Strategist at PwC Luxembourg, about the skills for a digital world and what the future holds. Let's go. Welcome to a new episode of Tech Talk. This is episode 18, season four, already. And we call it the one on skills for a digital world. In today's episode, we have a very, very special and young guest. It's Christopher Rosa, or Rosa, or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I would go for the first. Um, and he's an emerging technologies strategist uh, here in PwC Luxembourg. So welcome. Welcome, Christopher. Thanks a lot. Thank you for having me here. And I'm sorry, I forgot to say that Carla is right next to me. Of uh, course. Yes, of course. You, all, you know, but sometimes she gets sick. What can I say? But today she's... what? Get sick. Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay. I'm, I'm like an oak. I never get sick. That's the yeah. difference. <laughs> See that? So, no, I'm just joking. So, the weather is awesome. It's really hot. Uh, but I think this awesome weather is going away. It seems like it. No, not the... It, the it's, le it's, it's leaving us behind. Yes. yes. There is some uh, thunderstorms coming. In a couple yes. of days. In a couple well, of we days. We still have some time. Exactly. Yes. Well, I think it's Thursday, Friday. Something like this. Well, if you are around Luxembourg, you know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so enjoy well, the sun while you can. Enjoy the sun while you can. <laughs> so let's jump, in jump into this right away. Uh, let's jump into this right away. Uh, Carla, you just uh, so shall go I start? ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So I was thinking that it's um, undeniable that COVID, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, accelerated the digitalization of organizations and uh, the majority of us we were suddenly working from home entirely um, and organizations had to make it uh, technically possible mm -hmm. very very quickly um, and some companies or organizations were more ready than others does the same apply to their employees were they ready <laughs> or yes. some more than others <laughs> for this change No, yes, for sure. Um, it's, it's, it's completely relevant and it also applies to, to their employees. And uh, I mean, it's no surprise to anyone that, that this is true, uh, I would say. And we've seen it, we've witnessed it uh, in the market uh, with, uh, with our clients, uh, with our colleagues, our friends and families. And we've seen that some of them struggled way more than others in adapting uh, to this new world, to this new way of working and to this digitalization. And it's not simply uh, about the organization having the tools, having the infrastructure ready uh, for their employees. It's also about having their employees ready with completely new sets of skills because it's it's not simply now about taking your laptop and doing your work at home. It's not only about those technical skills. It's about as well uh, about digital skills now and about the soft skills uh, that are around all of these digital skills and how you push this uh, to their employees. That's interesting because, you know, a little anecdote on this one, uh, how we came up with this title and with this topic, I had a media interview with Virginie, mm -hmm. who works with you. And um, Virginie explained to the journalist, no, it's not having digital skills, it's preparing people to have skills for a world that is increasingly digital, which is a completely different way of thinking. And that includes soft skills. So you now you recall the soft skills, which are very important. And sometimes I feel left behind. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because we have this obsession with machines and coding and what else? What was that we were talking the other day? Was data analytics. Data analytics, <laughs> and we all have to. Be, and it's not true. It's not true. We still need this human, beautiful human well, side. I think that you see more and more uh, a need for soft skills, and the people are demanding more. In, uh, resilience and uh, 
emotional intelligence. Uh, and the more we see less, the more uh, we have to succeed or, or use more our digital, our human, I'm sorry, our softer skills. Well, so may I, I talk too much. <laughs> Maybe you can ask the second one already. Okay. <laughs> yes. So this is a very physio- phil- philosophical question. Digital skills for the world of work versus skills for a digital world. What's the difference? To me, there's a huge difference and it links back nicely to, to exactly. what Lewis <laughs> was saying <laughs> conveniently. Uh, but indeed, uh, so the, the challenge here is not simply to push those those skills for the world of work because it's not simply about, as I was saying, taking your laptop and doing the same thing that you were uh, doing before but from home. Uh, now it's about as well having this mindset um, towards technology and towards this digital world because in a way we're shaping and building the world of tomorrow we're equipping people with the skills that they need to have to be able to face those new challenges because as organizations where the jobs are evolving we're providing we're equipping uh, the world with the workforce of the future and it's in a way the responsibility of the organizations as well to to have the people ready not simply for work but to be Uh, digital citizens for the future and to have these skills for a digital world. And what I like to say as well is that it's not simply about learning, as you were saying, coding, programming. It's also about um, having the, the mindset and the understanding about technology, understand the logic behind and have this this uh, this appetite for technology that you can develop mm-hmm. to adapt it and to use it in your life and far more than just applying it in your day of daily work, let's say. I've got an unlisted question. Can I go, go ahead? For sure. Of course. Christopher, if you think of three, you can go to four. You can go to four. How skills, kind of you? soft skills, mm-hmm. we should keep and always bear in mind. Which one would they be? Hmm. Tricky question, but interesting question. The first one I would say, uh, and again, not a surprise, but I would say is communication. Mm-hmm. Uh, and way more important today than ever, uh, because we don't have this impromptu meeting that you would have when you're in the office, uh, of course, because you can't go and ask the question that you have to your teams directly. So it's a different It's also those soft skills are evolving with this digitalization. And for sure, communication is key uh, with your teams, with your colleagues, also with your clients and this interaction. Um, So I would say one would be communication. And then to the second one, uh, as a soft skills, I would say um, teamwork in a way, Uh, and it links again with communication, but all these interactions that you need to have, and and you see it at different levels, right? It's not simply now uh, about uh, managing your teams, it's it's also about those interactions and and supporting each other with all the challenges that you can have, can be technical challenging challenges, can be work related, uh, but it's it's completely new uh, challenges that we see evolving. And the last one, I think I'll stick to three, if it's okay for yes, you. Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go with resilience um, because it's, it's, and we've seen it, um, it's far more challenging now as well to be able to cut and to have this work-life balance. Um, so there's a lot of resilience and, and in a way, um, how do you call it, this um, restriction that you need to put yourself on boundaries, uh, that you need to cut your laptop completely disconnect. And that's far more challenging than ever now uh, when you're at home in your Absolutely. environment. Absolutely. And that's true. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. was thinking about uh, there are two sides to the same coin because you have to embrace technology, but at the same time, you have to have a healthy relationship with For technology sure. because uh, y- we are discovering the consequences of people when they have an unhealthy and more negative. Uh, I have a neck pain now already. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> See that? I, well, I don't know, because I'm staring at the screen every single time. <laughs> yes, that's true. Now, um, another anecdote. Can go. This morning, a colleague of mine sent me a, a, a chat um, saying, hey, tomorrow morning we will see each other almost the entire morning. And I said, yes. And I continued working. <laughs> and she said, aren't you happy? <laughs> but it's because the yes doesn't have any connotation. You know, nothing. Yeah. It's just, it's just, yeah, it could be like, yes, okay, yes, I have to see you tomorrow. <laughs> and that is, <laughs> that is what communication, that's the, the mm-hmm. trap of communication. You don't have, it doesn't look like it. You mean verbal communication? No, like no, written, written communication yes, uh, via yes, written. digital means. Exactly. It doesn't have soul. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's why you need to put emojis. <laughs> And that's why we use a lot of emo- emojis. And that's why companies shouldn't allow people to communicate via emojis. I think so. 
Okay, let's go to the third one. <laughs> <laughs> Advocating for the emojis. Or emojis, I don't know how to pronounce that. Emoticons, emojis, I don't emojis. know, they're different. Emojis. Yeah. Okay, so the third question, or well, in this case is like the fifth now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> are there organizations getting these different uh, rights? I mean, digital skills for, for the world uh, of work versus skills for a digital world? Or do you think they are falling falling into the let's create digital sav savvy people trap only? I, I think for sure some organizations are getting it right. And, and, and we see it as well in our daily work in the market, in the projects that we deliver, where we uh, we try to upskill and reskill uh, workforce in organization in organizations to be ready and fit, sorry, for the future. Um, so, so that's something for sure that we see happening. And, and a good example also of how to demystify those skills and to bring the right skills to the right people and not simply fall into the trap that you were mentioning. And then you end up with uh, what I like to call the shiny any new tool on the shelf syndrome because you have a nice <laughs> tool. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. I love that. You have a nice tool, but no one uses it. No one adopts it because they don't understand the impact it can have on their work. Um, so one thing that we do uh, also here at PwC, which is really impactful to have this adoption and this demystification, is we we have a program of digital accelerators that um, that was put in place where you have people going through a, an extensive training to understand really the tools and go really deep uh, in what they can put in place in their daily work to accelerate and not only accelerate their work, but also spread the knowledge and spread this appetite for technology. Um, and that means that then uh, it starts being a bit more organic and the people themselves, the employees, will, will then uh, bring this technology to their colleagues and spread uh, the world the world around that it's actually not not that magical and not that mystical to mm. to make that step and to learn these technologies. By the way, this, this song was a cat jumping, a black one. Was it? No, it wasn't. <laughs> it's just, you know, it was a joke. I, I have a question, though. I, well, when okay. people talk about the future, okay, how far is that future? I mean, we say fit for the future. Okay, for Carla, when is the future? Just, just randomly know. tell me, when is the future? Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow. Ralph, who is helping us technically, when is the future, Ralph? 15 years. For Ralph, 15 years, Christopher? It's today, I would say. I think I am with you. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the future is today. We say skills for the future or whatever with the f with future just because it sounds sexy. But the future is actually today. Everything is happening now. And that's the, the challenge really is that you try to anticipate all of this mm -hmm. because the moment you realize that you need to develop a skill, that you need to bring this training to the employees, to the people, to the world, to an extent, that's already too late. Um, and, and that's what we are doing now. We're trying to catch up uh, and to reskill and upskill the people. But the, the challenge is to un try and anticipate this and to bring it in, in the culture and to really make the, the, the job of today also fit for tomorrow. Uh, with the trainings that you have, with all the innovation uh, spirit that you can have around it. La now let's get geeky now. <laughs> Coding and data or data, depends on where you come from, analytics. Do we still need them? Do we definitely need them? Uh, to what extent we need them? <laughs> I'll, I'll say data if it's okay. With you. I, I, will, I also say data because, well, I think Americans say data. I don't know. No, I think it's the British. Say data? I'm confused now. I don't know. We are Australians. Today. <laughs> so I'll say the data. Yeah. Uh, if I can give a bit of a, a buzz answer and I'll explain why, I, I would say no. Uh, to an extent. But uh, of course, uh, those skills you will need in the future. I mean, it's undeniable that more jobs will require to know data analysis, that they will know coding, um, etc. And they will need to be trained uh, in these fields. What I mean when I say no, um, is that It's not simply, as I was saying in the beginning, it's not simply about having those skills and pushing uh, trainings about coding, about data science to everyone, mm -hmm. because it's not relevant to every job. Uh, what's more important, though, is to have people understand the logic and the power that technology can have. Because if you if you have this knowledge and, and this um, this appetite for technology as, as a second step, uh, you really then start targeting the trainings that you need and mm -hmm. tailoring uh, the trainings that you need to adapt to your concrete job of the future. And that's more really the challenge to, and that's what we try to tackle as a challenge in, 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 in the platform that we have, but to really um, focus on the skills that the employees need to have in order to move to the job that's tailored to them, to their job of the future. And only 
via targeting those trainings on specific skills that are useful for them, I think there will be mm. adoption. And it, and it links back again to this dem demystification and removing a bit of this fear uh, that we have around technology. Yeah, somehow data analytics fights intuition. I wouldn't say fights intuition, but it, it help us have more, be less clueless. Because what it does is it gives us more information so we can make better decisions. Better decisions. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, it's up to us to make those decisions. And I think that is also maybe it's a skill we should keep or even further develop. It's how to mix uh, data analytics based information with still some gut feeling. And <laughs> because that's still, mm -hmm. I think still there i don't know but that that's the, that's the thing and that's the challenge is to make people understand that we work together and we work with technology and it's it's an asset it's a tool that will empower the work that we do on a daily basis because the moment i'm sure the moment you start speaking about coding about technology you start to freak out half of the people listening to you and they start to tune out so it that's that's really this barrier that you need to break this fear about technology and that it's going to replace the work that you lose a bit of the control that you have uh, when you do stuff manually and that's for me the, the biggest yeah. challenge and so imagine I imagine if we have an algorithm on saying okay the euro 2021 will be we, will be win or won by I will get crazy. I don't <laughs> want to know because all the magic is gone. That's and I know you Ra have uh, octopus for that. Ralph is looking at me because <laughs> Germany is playing or today with I France. <laughs> you know where my heart is. I mean, it, it will never be there. It will be south. <laughs> 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 and Carl, of course, will go for Portugal. Of course. I am with you in this one. Really? In this uh, the group, this complicated group. It is Portugal very complicated. Has to go. Has to continue. It has to ah. go ahead. You said of has course, to go. No, has to go ahead. Ah. Okay. But you know, my, my heart is <laughs> always in the south. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your and support. And you go for? It depends. <laughs> I would say well, France. France. For sure, because I'm born French. But then it depends with whom I'm watching the, the games. Okay. So you go with the, with the flow? You with go the, with the flow. I go with the flow. I'm not that much into football. I'm more into rugby. So. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So I jump to the next one? Yes. Can go I? ahead. Okay. If there was a book called Five Steps to Developing a Plan uh, for Skills for Digital for the Digital World, imagine you are an author of this book. Uh, tell me the steps. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the, firstly, um, there's already a great book that's written, which is in six steps by Christian Schaff and Laurent Props, which focuses really on, on how you upskill people within an organization. Uh, but it's really then, then granular and it's the work we do on a daily basis. But if you allow me then to take a step back and maybe a different scope and a different perspective uh, on, on that topic, um, I would have five steps like this. So, the first one for sure is to creating the environment, having uh, the cyber security, the data pri privacy in place so that people feel that they can safely use technology uh, and leverage its power in their, not even in, only in their work, but in their daily lives. Uh, that's step one, to have this, this environment. Step two, I would say, is then to equip the people have them uh, the infrastructure in place, have the tools uh, ready for the people, have the trainings in place so that they know what they will be doing um, and have the infrastructure available. And that's a step that most organizations are, are there. Uh, they're doing it. They have the trainings, they have the tools, but then you end up in that uh, shiny tool on a shelf syndrome that I was <laughs> speaking about before. So it links with the three last steps that are for me uh, crucial and links back to the challenges that I was speaking about. First one is to foster this adoption, demystify all this, all this technology and accelerate um, the, the retention and the adoption of technology. And there's many ways to do that. One way uh, that I was speaking about that we do internally is those digital accelerators, but it also goes through targeting and we need tailoring the training uh, for the people uh, about the uh, two towards sorry the jobs that are doing that they'll be doing in the future, um, and that's really a crucial aspect to really have targeted trainings, and then. Once you have this demystification, this acceleration of technology, you you end up in the in the what what is the last let's say effective step uh, or organizational step, which is to have uh, and foster the innovation. Uh, and building on this wave, this this uh, demystification of technology to to keep the momentum going uh, and 
have the people bring the innovation and have this appetite for technology. And how you do this is something that we do also here is we have what we call an idea lab, where we foster innovation towards uh, enabling people through challenges to bring uh, the innovations and the ideas that they have. And that's really effective because then instead of just pushing the technology, you have people really digest it, see what they can do with it and bring it uh, effectively to the firm and spread it around uh, in their departments and in their daily works. Uh, and that's really uh, far more effective to have people push the technology than just pushing it yourself through trainings. Um, and to wrap this in, in the last step, which is uh, more of a transversal step, but um, far most, uh, the, the most important step, I would say, is to monitor all of this. Um, because you need to understand not only the return that you can expect uh, from, through this digitalization and all those five steps, but also to try and keep it sustainable and to monitor the impact that the people have with these new technologies, with these workflows that they pushed and that they spread around the firm. Um, and also so technology is evolving really fast, right? So if you can monitor all of this and make sure that these feedback loops goes and that you keep up with this future, which is today and not in 15 years, <laughs> sorry, <Ralph. laughs> if you can if you can keep up with that pace uh, and if you understand this and um, through this monitoring, then you can loop it back in those four first steps and make sure that everything goes um, according to plan. You know, when I think of digital tech and I think of businesses, I always imagine a cheetah running behind. No, for now it's a lion, okay? But it's increasingly becoming, the lion is becoming a cheetah. So it's going so fast that I think at some point we just, if they, because always the problem is time, mm. how quick they should go. And that was the, the question is not, is unlisted as well, but <laughs> <laughs> all these things you say, adoption, lab, idea lab, it, this it should should not be at one point in time. I think it should be constant. So it becomes a new way of working. Like, exactly. Is it, isn't it that? Yeah, 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 no, for sure. I mean, it's technology evolves really fast and, and that's undeniable. And if you want to keep up with it, you need, um, and that's why the future is today, because you need to try and anticipate this evolution. And of course, then you, you can end up in this shiny uh, tool on the shelf that's not useful in the end. Uh, but the idea is to try and anticipate and try to be as effective as possible. And that's why if you really have tailored training and have the people bring the innovation and bring and, and actually embrace and have an appetite for technology and for digital skills, uh, that's where it's, I believe, is more efficient because then they really bring the tools and use the tools and the workflows and all those automated processes uh, that really make an impact on their work. And that's where you start uh, finding results that also impact the wider team and the organization as a whole. I'm going to bring more pessimistic uh, <laughs> No, Carla. Well, side the, to the, the table. next question is very long. It means it's written by Carla. No, that's not true. You sometimes write long questions too, as well. <laughs> anyway, but before I forget, um, no, I'm just thinking that um, that's all very interesting. But can it be tiring as well? I mean, sometimes we get new tools I or think new. So. We have to do a new training and I think people are just like, oh no, not again. <laughs> or, you know, I think that we are all uh, pressed for time mm -hmm. and it's uh, it can be can bring some fatigue maybe. I don't know if you want to comment on that. No, no, for sure. And, and, and that's also a challenge to try and target the key people and the people that actually want to do it. Uh, that's one thing that we do when we try to upskill and reskill people. We also try and take into account the projects that they have. And it's the same here with the digital accelerators. People had to apply because, of course, there's a lot of time and energy that you have to dedicate toward towards this technology. And as I was saying, you don't need to push coding, programming to everyone. So it's really if you focus the people that want to do it, that have an appetite, then they'll probably spread the message um, far more easier than tr through big campaigns, big new tools, etc. And then you, you trigger adoption and you trigger also, I hope at least, uh, this adoption for other people and this appetite as well for technology. Yes, it's like uh, contagious. Yes. Well, <laughs> and and, and the, the coming pyramid of classes, of social classes, we have the coders on top, and the ones who <laughs> don't know code down. I don't know, because even now you feel that, you know, the engineers, I am a one, they feel like they are smarter. I mean, no, we are, mm -hmm. we are boring. <laughs> we are boring. 
And, and, and we, we are very narrow-minded sometimes. I say we because I am one. Mm-hmm. Of course, I have you the chance. You use complicated words? We use complicated <laughs> words, and we are not better than anyone else. And I'm saying that because sometimes artists or people, you know, using their dancers, they are considered less legitimate to win. <laughs> <laughs> I, and that drives me crazy. No, but, but for sure, and that's that's why we don't all need to be boring. We don't all have to be engineers, <laughs> Thank you. right? Thank you, <laughs> Sorry, mm. Luis, but, <laughs> but that's, that's just a fact. Uh, so, so I mean, it's it's the same way with cooking. We all have a, um, we all know a bit how to cook, but there's pe- people doing it way better than we can do it. And with technology, it's a bit the same. You just need to understand how it works, see how it can bring more more efficiency in your daily work, and then you have way smarter people than, than we are building the technology, building the tool, and it's then just a matter of adopting it. And when I speak about demystifying technology and the, the power it can have on people and on the work, I'm not speaking about writing 100 lines of code. Uh, it's simple thing as well. It's tips and tricks that you can use on your daily work uh, that can accelerate your work and make a tremendous difference on what you do, and you don't have to be a boring engineer for this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> There is hope. There is hope. So Portuguese cuisine or Italian? Italian. What? Italian or French? Italian. Very good. <laughs> no, because he mentioned cuisine. I said, okay, now is the moment to ask. Okay, Carlita. Good point, good point. Let's so go my, my long question. Your long question. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, we know that the traditional path of getting a degree and finding a job for life no mm-hmm. longer exists. I think this is not just a generational or a cultural phenomenon. Um, it's not just millennials anymore. Um, yeah, it's also because technology is constantly changing, uh, evolving, and so the jobs, and you've mentioned that. Mm-hmm. Um, so because of this, we all realize that we need continuous training. And ironically or not, how does technology influence the organization and delivery of uh, trainings. It, it's, it's actually true that you mentioned, and it's good that you mentioned that it's not simply technology, right? And there, there's a study showing that uh, um, a kindergarten child today, he will see probably more than nine different jobs uh, in his career, right? So that shows really uh, right. that there's a need for con- continuous training and the need because they're going to change jobs uh, a lot more than we did in the past and maybe more than we do today. And it's not just from a company to another is no. really job title and functions. Yes, for sure. It's also internal mobility is also really key there. Uh, and that's what we try and do as well. And we see, I mean, we see also in the past uh, past few years and uh, now that there's a drive in the market to have more upskilling, to have more reskilling. Uh, there's a, a conscience in the market that uh, we need to adapt the skills of the people towards those jobs of the future because those jobs are going to change and you need to train the people. So for sure, technology has a huge role to play there because it evolves so fast uh, that the training as well, the training programs need and the training catalogs to an extent need to evolve as well. Um, and that's that's also a key challenge um, and that we try to, to tackle in, in the work uh, we do here to try and anticipate not only the change in skills, the change in technology that, uh, that will impact the job of the future, And then, of course, you can define the, these jobs and try and anticipate those skills. But more important than this uh, is also the, the training programs, the training catalogs of the authorities, the organizations, uh, and what skills are, are regrouped uh, under those training catalogs. And that's also quite challenging to try not only to find if those skills will be needed, but also if the employees will have them and the job seekers as well. Because only then you can really tailor this training catalog and find really the impactful skills that we were saying, those soft skills, digital skills as well, that we really, that will really make a difference uh, for the job of the future. And that's that's an interesting challenge, but quite, mm-hmm. a, quite a good one. Yes, it's a challenging challenge. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to skip to the last question, may I, Luis? Because I think they are somehow connected. Yeah, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Um, because, yeah, again, going back to the pandemic, it changed so many aspects of our lives. And for instance, I had enrolled in a photography course just before, uh, just like one month before uh, we were in confinement. And it was canceled, it has been canceled ever since. I understand, you know, if it's a practical mm-hmm. course, it's difficult to do it online. But some traditional face-to-face trainings and courses uh, adapted to the new circumstances. And um, so 
Here comes my crystal ball <laughs> question. Um, how do you see the future of training? Mm-hmm. Do you think that it's going to be more online training or are we going back to a mix or a face-to-face? It's, it's again a, a really good question. And then the, um, this, I think online training are for sure they're here to stay. Uh, and we're going to see more and more of them in the future. But it's, it's not only about having those online trainings because we, discov- we discovered new tools, new, new ways maybe of teaching and, and it democratized a bit these online trainings. That's true. Uh, mm. Yeah. Uh, and on top of this, I think Absolutely. if online trainings only bring one thing is that they bring more flexibility. Uh, so if, if that's the only thing that they bring, at least people now will have um, more, will be more inclined to take those trainings because they don't have to find time to be really on premises and to completely free up their agenda. Um, and I'm saying that as well, because today, this morning, I was having a training on Agile and we actually pushed to have this training face to face, which goes to say that, of course, online is going to stay, uh, but we are also shifting back for specific trainings uh, to face to face because yeah. it there it's are always things, yeah I agree with you yeah it's always more interesting for for some topics to have trainings face to face and again it depends on the skills that you're trying to push uh, of course for soft skills better yeah. to have them in, in person but for more digital or technical skills some uh, remote training uh, online trainings or even training that don't require directly a coach are uh, also going to be there to stay uh, but for me the most uh, the most interesting question as well to link back to the previous question and the, the more crystal ball-y question <laughs> is, crystal ball, <laughs> like that. Right. is really which skills uh, are, will be needed in those trainings more so than the, the way that we communicate and the way that we give and deliver those trainings because that can always evolve. Uh, the skills are really more, more crucial to anticipate. But I think the format influences a lot as well the type of training you would, you would prefer. Mm-hmm. I, I mm-hmm. think more workshop type of training I prefer presential I prefer you know be mm-hmm. there it's things that where you have to put your hands on that I mean it's very difficult or, or even run a brainstorming session even if you have all these super cool trooper super Tools. trooper cools yes. it is not the same well it's never going to be the same no. but now you have uh, master's degrees or uh, yeah, yeah of course in, 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 uh, to flexibility Christopher I would yes. add accessibility yes. because then you true. can get you know University of San Francisco I saw one course a years ago that I was interested in and years ago and before Corona and now it's even more yes I think it accelerated yeah. as well uh, this, uh, exactly exactly so I will move to the next one it's, it's, it's a little bit more political um, <laughs> because it's about decision making governance and who takes the lead when it comes to upskilling and reskilling in Europe. So we Europeans tend to think that is the government. I read an article explaining that in Japan it's the individuals assume the responsibility of, of upskill themselves. In other in America it's a mix and I think uh, more in, Amer- in the Americas the entire continent it's more responsibility of the business Mm -hmm. so it it also talks about how different we are culturally which is beautiful uh what do you think so for sure first of all it's a cultural thing and it will depend on where you are and how it needs to be implemented but there's there's it links back also to this five step let's say uh book uh, that i'm supposedly writing (laughs) the book that will sell (laughs) more books than um christo i forgot his name now Christian like Scherf? Christian Scherf. I'm sorry, what's a Christopher? <laughs> no, I mix both names. So, sorry, sorry, <laughs> Christian. Starts the same. Sorry, Christian. <laughs> exactly. Ooh. And Lohan I, I have lost my job now. Yes. I have lost yes. my job. No, no. Um, yeah, you will sell more books. Yes, yes, hopefully. But, but yeah, to, to me... Uh, but you might write the book now. Louise gave you the title and everything. No, but come on, <laughs> completely different scopes. Yours is more strategy. Yours yeah. goes be, be, uh, above. below. Above. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and it, to an extent, it encompasses a bit this this organizational uh, way of thinking about reskilling. But that's that's where, for me, um, if you think about those different steps, the, the, the we're all responsible uh, because we need to have this safe environment. So we need to have the governments, uh, the authorities, put in place a safe environment to. to 
for people to develop their skills and to not be scared about technology. Um, so they are for sure responsible for a part of the picture. But then uh, you also have organizations for sure because they have the workforce of today, so the workforce of the future, that they need to upskill and to have them ready um, to develop the skills that they actually need to be fit for the, the, the digital world. Um, but then one aspect that we didn't speak about it and I think is really uh, important and that has a huge role to play is the educational bodies uh, and universities because not too long ago Absolutely. I was at university and I saw the same challenge and I tried to tackle it uh, which was that uh, the teachers, the, the students and the leaders of the universities they were really reluctant to embrace technology and to push it in their courses which was This Crazy between uh, parentheses, especially in France. <laughs> this is between. <laughs> <laughs> that was I would in, disagree. That was in Belgium. Even, so. Oh my God! No, but <laughs> really, I mean, go ahead. Why you disagree? Uh, because it's the same in Portugal. Portugal. It's so so Asian. Uh, the methods are so is, is Asian. Is yeah. the That's the problem. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Too much. Too many pastiches de nata. Yes, for yeah. sure. That's for the, sure. that's <laughs> the <laughs> problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, it's hot. It's hot. That's why. So yes, it's, it's affecting you. I'm allowed to say <laughs> things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, for sure. But then, and it's it's not even about the courses. And I think it evolved now that COVID uh, came into play and we digitalized as well a bit the universities. But it, it's not simply about the way that you give the courses because now it evolved a bit. We all have those platforms and, and we've seen courses online uh, and similar to what we have with trainings. But it's also about adapting a bit the courses and the classes that you give and the content that you give to, to put in perspective the skills and the tools and, and uh, the, those soft skills as well that will be required in the when you work after university because in the end they, they prepare the workforce of tomorrow uh, that will then come to the organizations so it's 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 a nice um, I mean, it's a nice uh, picture with multiple stakeholders and I think for sure all of them have a role to play because in the end the people you need to upskill and have ready are these individuals and they for sure have a role to play because they need to to use this technology in the end and use the tools to accelerate their work and their daily lives as well. But if they don't feel comfortable and, and confident with technology and don't feel safe to an extent and that they fear this technology, <laughs> they're, they're never going to use it. Um, so it's also for them to, to try and have a different perspective on this technology, but it, it's not going to come like But this. if there is one that should be the pusher, If there is one that should be the declencher, <laughs> like to, to, to trigger, yeah. to trigger, it should be the government. That's your view, Luis. No, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> stating but asking at the same time because it shouldn't be the government. I mean, with, with a plan, inviting the rest of the stakeholders, because we start playing the game that we all we are. Yes, that this petit comité, we are all cool, and we mm -hmm. should start by okay, okay. But then let's put our hands on. For sure. I mean, if, if, if the government pushes it, it's, it's far easier, right? But sometimes if you wait for the government, you're already oh, yeah. too late. Okay. Um, Or if you wait for the companies to, yes. to push you as well to upskill. Maybe, maybe it's a complicated question, but yeah. It is, it is, I think so. Um, We have one more to go, Carla. Yes. And I think it's yours too. It can be mine. Because <laughs> yes. it's a long one? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not surprisingly. <laughs> And no. it's focusing on you, actually, yes. Christopher. So you, we know, and you've mentioned uh, as well, uh, that you work in projects focusing on upskilling governments and organizations. So can you tell us more about it and how are they doing it and why? <laughs> tell us. Yes, for sure. So it, it follows uh, the nice book that I was saying from <laughs> Chef and, uh, and Laurent Props, which has these six steps. You're an excellent seller. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, so it has these six steps and, and this process about upskilling and reskilling organizations, governments, uh, you name it. And, and there's a platform that we developed internally that supports this process. And basically what we try to do is to accompany uh, in the end the employees because they are at the heart of this reskilling and upskilling journey. And, and what we do is the first step uh, in this in this process is to assess the workforce and do some workforce planning for the future. So we work with the organization, with the government to understand which jobs will be really impacted mm -hmm. and to which jobs they're going to move in the future. And with this, you can really understand which employees within the organization 
can be targeted. So which one actually want to move in, in this uh, upskilling program because that helps retention, adoption, everything that we discussed before. So that's the first step, defining who's going to be impacted. Then we, we move towards assessing the skills because you need to understand the skills that people have because you want something tailored to them and to then be able to, to understand in which job they're going to move and, and define the trainings that they need. Um, so what we do is we build what we call the comprehensive skills profile to assess the soft skills that we mentioned, the technical skills and the digital skills of the people to have really a picture because you could have the same title in an organization, but do completely do different things and have a different mm -hmm. story. So that's what we do. We assess this comprehensive skills profile. And then from them, we move to um, a bit more technology. So we have a, a matching algorithm, a bit of AI in the middle. That so is that where you come in because you have Im this emerging technologies yes. strategy title? Yes, a bit. But I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle <laughs> of everything. I try to demystify it at my level and be a, a bit of a bridge between the, the, the business and the technology. Um, and, and I try to explain what this algorithm does because there's this fear towards technology, as I was mentioning, and people tend to not always trust this algorithm because it's, it's, they, they can't feel it, right? Uh, so that's my role to an extent and what I try to do. Because then when, when we match those those people to the, the job of the future, uh, you can as well assess the gap in skills in between the, the job that they have today and the job of the future, and then define a concrete training plan, tailored training plan to the skills that they have to move them in the future, uh, in, the, in the job of the future. Then you accompany them with coaches to the job of the future. And we also have this nice transversal step of, of monitoring uh, everything that happens around it. Because with technology, with change, with upskilling, uh, it needs to be managed, right? You need a lot of change management. Is it the skill expander? Yes. Am I right? Yes, yes. So you can go and check it out at pwc.lu slash Skill expander? Upskilling. No, upskilling. upskilling. Okay. I have just one question. <laughs> the last one is not is unlisted. So you know Another one of the one. things yeah, but it's <laughs> I think it's it's it will be good for everyone because one of the things that drive me drive me really nuts when I read about this upskilling thing is that it will everything is shiny. And even I have written a blog <laughs> saying not, everything is not shiny. And primarily because when there is a major change, there are always laggers or losers. <laughs> so <laughs> I think the more we state clearly that this is you know, a situation where there are side effects, mm -hmm. I think the happier people will be. But if, you, if we only sell the idea that this will be a marvelous future, <laughs> I think it's not accurate and it's even unfair. I mean, for, for sure, and, and we've seen this for, for with many changes, many crises in, in exactly. the past as well. You, you can't have only winners. Uh, it's always the same. We have jobs that are going to be uh, augmented, for sure, but jobs are going to be automated. So there are jobs that are going to disappear. That's why you need to try also reskill the people, but some, some of them are, are going to have to adapt and they're going to lose their job and need to find another one. So that's why we try what we try to focus yeah. on as well. Uh, because uh, as you were saying, and rightfully so, um, there can be only winners uh, in, in any, there any is no, change. There is no story in the history of life <laughs> where there are always winners, because no. then w then there won't be winners. Then. Yeah. <laughs> that's you need true. losers. Of course. Of course. But that's the challenge, and trying to reduce the number of losers and have many... That's the point. As many people as very possible. Good, very good answer. Yes. Very good answer. So I think we are done. Uh, yes. Unless, Carla, you have any other long questions? No, ones? no more long questions. None of, them, <laughs> none of them. Okay. So good luck. You have a match today. Yes. yes. Well, when you <laughs> when you listen to the podcast, probably the match <laughs> will be already. Yes. <laughs> we will know the results. But yeah, very, very good luck. And to Ralph as well, because your enemies tonight I will see. and um, I really thank you Christo it was a very very nice thank you very much warm and enjoyable conversation it Thanks. was literally warm yes, yes. <laughs> literally warm so well you know the end of every single episode this is Tech Talk technology made simple over a cup of coffee or tea Party. or I don't know a, a uh, lemonade with no, this heat? Uh, no, but I'll spritz. Ah, of, of course. course. I don't like it. It's summer. You're Portuguese. You may like wine, cold wine. Cold wine? Oh, well, green wine. <laughs> okay, <course>. wine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Thanks. Ciao, ciao. Have a good day. And that's all for today. This is Tech Talk. Technology made simple over a cup of coffee. 
Thank you for listening and until the next episode.